Hello, my name is Connor McGoy, creator of Summit the Board Game from Inside Up Games. Today I'm going to quickly tell you how to set up the cooperative version of the game and how to start playing. First of all, deciding on the mode of play is important, whether you're playing cooperative or competitive. You can tell the difference because the cooperative game uses a Sherpa track, whereas the competitive game uses a Karma track. You are also going to want to decide what difficulty you're playing at, as I have designed the game from very easy on chill, trying, risky, reckless, all the way up to very hard on legendary. You can tell that as a base camp descends, the mountain will get taller, harder, and the gameplay will be longer. For this example, we'll just set it up on chill, which is very easy. In the cooperative version of Summit, players will need to work together using their skills, abilities, and resources to get to the summit of the mountain and back to base camp. The game can be so grueling that only one character needs to both summit and return to base camp for the expedition to be considered a success. That said, there is a scoring mechanism at the back of the rulebook which you can use to score your games and try to push yourself to the limit. After deciding on the difficulty of play, make sure to set the blizzard marker at the same difficulty. In this case, chill. If you're playing with more than three players, I recommend putting the four player token on the blizzard track as well, which will half the severity of the blizzard. Next, you're going to want to place the numbered item tokens on their corresponding numbers up the left hand side of the board. Place the dice, the active player marker, and the extra tokens beside the board within reach of all players. In the cooperative version of the game, the active player token you choose can have an effect on the game. So make sure you look through the six possible player tokens and decide which is best for your group. In our example, we're playing with three players, but if you were to play with four, five, or six, you would need a second base camp. Each player starting in their own tent. You would also need the larger summit for four, five, or six players. The cooperative game is based a lot more on reality, without a halfway camp, where players would be going from the highest camp on the mountain to the summit and back within a 24 hour period of time. Next, you're going to want to deal out three tiles to each player, and these tiles can be left face up as you'll be working together, so there's no need to hide any information. Get the event deck ready by shuffling in the appropriate cooperative cards and removing any competitive cards. Also, you can choose to add any of the sunny days, making the game easier, or any of the double black diamonds, making the game harder. The karma cards are not needed in the cooperative version of the game, so they can be returned to the box. Next, all players will want to choose the character map or distribute them at random. Make sure to read your abilities out loud so you know how you can help each other during the game. For your first expedition, I highly recommend turning to page 11 of the rulebook and using the quick setup guide. It'll tell you where to put your cubes and help you learn to track your resources. All players will be responsible for tracking their own food, oxygen, weight, health, and speed. As a player loads up more food and oxygen, they'll pass weight markers, which will tell them to increase their weight and their weight track. This will affect their speed and the speed track. Be sure to calculate any weight from items when calculating your character's weight. That total amount of weight will show you where the weight track will be and how it affects your speed. In the quick setup, I've also assigned items to all characters. When looking at item cards, there are two things you want to watch for. Obviously what they do and how they affect your character, but also any weight they may have. In the initial setup, all the cards will either have no weight or one weight. And in the cooperative version, I just recommend dealing two items to each Sherpa. They'll be carrying extra items and supplies at the mountain for you. So you can also fill them with six oxygen and 11 food. As you can see, they're color coordinated to match your character. Once you've played a few times, instead of the generic startup, you would deal out four items per number of players. So in a three player game, you would deal out 12 items, taking up to two per player and up to two per Sherpa. You really only need one of the flag tokens to mark when you get to the top of the summit. All players will place their mountaineer in a tent at base camp to get ready for the start of the game. If you ever begin your turn at camp, you can choose to skip your movement and heal up to three. Or you may skip your movement and load up supplies as necessary, as much food and oxygen as you wish. The camps can never run out. Lastly, you can choose to draw three item cards, equipping those as necessary, and shuffling the others back into the deck. Be sure to remember to affect your weight as necessary. A player may stay in camp for as long as they wish, doing any of these actions and repeating them if needed. Be sure to remember that players in camp roll the dice, but are not affected by any food requirements, including the blizzard. The last step for the cooperative setup is deciding what time you'd like to leave. This does add a fair bit of difficulty to the game, so I recommend not using it for your first play. If you want a little bit more excitement and difficulty, you will choose when to start that time. The reason it matters is that during the nighttime phases, your movement is halved. The clock will advance by one hour after each player has had one turn. At the end of the game, there is also a scoring mechanic using the time of day, so the faster you're able to conquer this mountain, the better for you. As you know, Summit is a survival game where you're working together to go up and down the stair of the mountain. It will be created new each time depending on the placement of your tiles. There are two important rules to know about tile placement. First of all, tiles must always be placed long edge to long edge or short to short, never short to long. 
Also, because you're climbing a mountain and laying rope, you can only place tiles as you move onto them. So as my character is moving at a speed of 5, plus 1 for his trekking poles, 6, he would count each knot as a point of movement. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You'll see there are three different types of tiles in the game, the best being the brown, neutral tiles with the healthy green trees. Next are the blue tiles, which are icy. There are more knots in the same distance, which will slow your character down. Lastly are the yellow tiles, the thin air tiles with the dead trees and the yellow rope. Every time your character enters a thin air tile, they will consume one oxygen. If that oxygen lowers their weight and that weight loss increases their speed, they would gain that speed immediately. Once a character has paid the oxygen requirement for that tile, he will not need to pay it again until they leave and come back or enter a different thin air tile. Included in the game are some quick reference cards, which are two-sided, so make sure you're paying attention to the symbol in the upper right-hand corner to let you know if it's cooperative or competitive. On your turn, you basically have four options of what you're going to do. The most common action will be moving and placing tiles as needed. Or I'm simply throwing out my tiles and drawing a fresh hand of three. Players may choose to skip movement to attempt the removal if during the game they have an event card or potentially a token weighing them down. To do so, they must skip their movement and roll the event die. If they roll the mountain, they may remove one card or token bothering them. If, however, they roll blank, they are stuck with that token or item and have wasted their turn. And lastly, players may skip their movement to resupply from their Sherpa. You wouldn't do this at base camp, but more likely when you're getting to the top of the mountain or possibly on your way back down. To do so, you would simply announce that you were skipping your movement and resupplying. If, for example, I had run out of food at some point, or was nearly out of food, I might choose to take any number of oxygen, let's say three, and any number of food, let's say four. I would then calculate my weight again, one, two, three, four, five, adjust my weight as needed, and adjust my speed accordingly. You are also able to switch in and out any items you want or need. If a player chooses to skip their movement to perform another action, they may only perform one other action. They are not able to perform multiple actions using the skip your movement. After choosing from one of those actions, you roll the dice. Always resolve the blue die first. If you roll a mountain, you will draw from the blue event deck, reading the entire card aloud. In this example, I've drawn spoil, and all players will lose one food. However, it does not affect the player's health. After doing that, you will resolve the weather die. Five sides of the weather die affect only the player who rolled them. It will tell you how much food you need to consume. The sun is a nice warm day, and you won't need to consume any extra food. Any of the single snowflakes, and there are three, means you'll consume one food. A double snowflake means consume two food. The final side affects all players not in camp. When you roll the blizzard, the blizzard track marker will rise by one level. All players not in camp will consume the required resources. In our example, that would only be me. If you're playing with four or more players, I recommend adding the four player token to slow the severity of the blizzard because as you can tell, it gets worse and worse until everybody dies. However, if you want a challenge, take that out and see just how well you can do. After resolving both of your dice, you will draw new tiles to refill your hand, and then pass the dice and the active player token to the player on your left. If for some reason in the game, you either want to drop an item that you didn't want, maybe leave it for your descent or for another fellow climber, you simply take that item and tuck it under the board on the left-hand side. Take the matching number item token and place it on your current tile. Any player passing through that tile may pick up that item to gain its effects. In a cooperative game, the players may talk and decide which player will take the lead and who is going to go first. Okay, now that we've set up the game and you've learned some basics on how to play, let's do a couple quick rounds so you can see how it would work. We'll have Connor go first, as he has some pretty good tiles and pretty good speed. I'm going to ignore the time of day track just to keep things fast. Connor's going to move 5 plus 1 is 6. 1, 2, 3, Four. Connor's going to choose not to finish his movement just for fun, so he can use his pythons to increase the speed for his whole team and allow them to leapfrog him. He's done his movement in placing tiles, so he's going to roll both the dice, resolving the blue die first. No event is needed, and he'll have to consume two food. As for his ability, he'll only be consuming one. Next, he'll draw two new tiles to replenish his hand, and then pass the dice and the active player token to the player on his left. It's now Kathy's turn, and she's going to move. She has a speed of 5. 1, 2, 3. She can jump over Connor and use the Pythons. 4, placing a tile of her own. 5. She's entered a thin air tile and has to use an oxygen. Using that oxygen is dropping her weight, and that weight loss is increasing her speed. She can move one extra space right away. She'll now roll both dice, resolving the blue die first. Spoil. All players lose one food. Happy loses a food, 
Vince loses a food, Connor loses one food as well, as his ability only protects him on his turn. Next, Kathy still has to eat her one food from her weather guy, and her weight drops again. She'll pass both the dice and the first player token to Vince, and draw a new tile to replenish her hand. It's now Vince's turn and he can move six. One, two, three, four, five, and he can place a tile as well, as he has one movement and can leapfrog over Kathy. He must remember to spend one oxygen as he enters that tile. His sixth movement brings him into another thin air tile, so he'd have to use another oxygen. Using that oxygen drops his weight again. However, it does not increase his speed as he is already at full speed. He will roll both dice, resolving the blue die first to get an event. Exposure. Vince will now lose three health or his next turn. He could ignore this card if he had snow goggles or extra layers, but he does not. He does have a med kit, so he's going to choose to lose the three health. One, two, three, dropping his speed by one. He did roll a sun, so he had some good luck and does not need to consume any extra food this turn. He'll draw one new tile to replenish his hand and pass both the dice and the first player token back to Connor. Had we been using the time of day track, that would have been one round and the hour would increase by one. Thank you for watching a setup and overview of Summit the board game in its cooperative version. You can also play this version solo if you'd like by taking two Sherpas instead of just one during your setup of the game. I hope you enjoyed and everything made uh, enough sense. And please feel free to reach out to me at Inside Up Games on social media if you have any questions. And use the hashtag Summit Survival for sharing any stories or photos so I can follow along and learn about your adventures. Thanks for supporting me on my first game, and I hope to give you some more. Bye-bye.